Hi you guys, Lindsay here. Well, welcome back to my channel, Inside to Him. It's reveal day for my social mashup. I am so excited to tell you guys about this dress. But before I go over every detail, here's some footage I took showing exactly how I altered the pattern pieces to get them to mash up this way. All right, so I have pulled out the front and back bodice pattern pieces from the pattern where the bodice portion of my dress is coming from. I am going to be making version B, which has the tie neckline, not the uh, wrap, and this little sleeve. The sleeve is a little bit irrelevant for this part, but I need to make sure that I am using um, the pattern pieces for A and B, which I've got A and B, A and B. Okay, so now what I need to do is I need to find the waistline of these pattern pieces and Thank you very much, Big Four. They always have the waistline marked. This is a bit of a blouse on or a blouse on design, meaning it like billows um, below the lower waist where it attaches to the panty. I am going to make a true waistline. I don't want my skirt to start way down here on my high hip. I want my skirt to start at my natural waist. That's also going to make it easier for me to attach the skirt because the skirt waistline is at your natural waist as well. So once you identify the waistline, you need to carry out this line all the way across. To do that, I simply used my hem gauge and I measured all the way across like so. And then I took my styling design ruler. Uh, this is from Nancy's Notions. And I lined up all the lines and connected them all. I'm gonna do the same thing for the front bodice piece. And then I'm going to trace this all out onto tracing paper. Okay, here they are all traced out. The front is very straightforward. I just traced it exactly like the pattern piece. You wanna to remember to add your seam allowance. So 5 eighths of an inch below the waistline is where I cut the front. Then for the back, it gets a little bit trickier. I did the same thing with the waistline, adding the seam allowance there. But this back piece is actually cut on the fold. There isn't a seam there. And because in the original pattern, you climb into the garment, through like stretchy panty, we aren't going to have that accessibility once we make it a dress. So I needed to add seam allowance to the center back uh, seam so that we can add a zipper later, making it really easy to zip on and off. Okay, and in addition to the bodice pieces, I also gathered up the sleeve. I need the front facing and the back facing for the top as well as the little tie detail um, that hangs from the neckline. So that is all it for the bodice. And honestly, the hardest work is done. The skirt is very easy because there are no alterations. So here is the pattern for the skirt I'm gonna be using. I'm gonna be using this uh, I think it's like a half or a quarter circle skirt, not this more fitted one. And we're just going to attach it. You can see that the waistline is already five eighths of an inch below the cutting line. So that is going to fit perfectly into our waistline. And then the center back here already has the seam allowance for the zipper as well. So we don't have to add anything or do anything fancy to the back nor do we have to do anything fancy to the front. The only, only thing we wanna double check, and this is especially, this kind of doesn't apply to mine because mine has this blousey effect, but if you are doing a fit and flare where your bodice is fitted to a kind of waist band or waist line that is fitted, you're gonna to wanna to double check your finished uh, garment measurements at the waistline. You should have one for your bodice and one for your skirt. Uh, where you'll find those pieces, sometimes they're on the skirt pieces, sometimes they're on the waistband pieces, sometimes they're on the bodice pieces, but wherever they are, you just wanna make sure that they are going to match up. And if not, then trim accordingly. But like I said, mine is gonna gather and it's gonna blouse over 
the top of the skirt. So if the bodice top, I mean, sorry, if the bodice waistline is bigger than the skirt waistline, that's actually kind of part of the design detail. So you can see here, if we pull these things to, up to each other and line up the center front on the fold line, you can tell that one of them is going to be longer than the other by about, this is literally guessing, but by about however many inches that is, three maybe. So more like two and a quarter. But again, I want that blousey effect. Um, so I'm not going to make any adjustments. I want the bodice to be bigger than the skirt. And so now you just proceed like you normally would and you go about cutting out your pattern pieces uh, like normal. So it really was that easy and humble brag, the results are glorious. I'm so in love with my dress. And the best part is that since it's a mashup, I can pretty much guarantee that no one else in the world will have my dress. Well, unless some of you are inspired to go make your own exact version, then we'll just be twins, and that's awesome too. I was just in New York City, and Chic Fabric, where I got this fabric, I think last year, still has some. So if you're in the area, you should go check it out. I loved working with it. It's a mid-weight polyester something or another. They're not very specific in the garment district. I love how weighty it is, but it's still swishy. You know, those technical terms. Okay, now to the patterns. As you saw, I used the bodice of Simplicity 8789 and the skirt of Butterick 6676. Simplicity 8789 is a bodysuit pattern from earlier this year or maybe sometime in the fall of last year. The website describes it as a bodysuit blouse with a knit bottom featuring a snap crotch closure, front and sleeve variations, and gathers to give you that perfect tucked in look. If you remember, I made the bodysuit version of this pattern for the Style Maker Fabrics Spring Style Tour out of a rayon chalet. I chose the bodice because I knew I wanted a flared sleeve and a blousey billowing top. In hindsight, I could have lengthened the bodice a little bit to give it an even more dramatic blousing effect. Butterick 6676 is a dress with an invisible zipper, semi-fitted bodice with or without front neckline slit, side tabs, or front ties. View A has an A-line skirt with front pleats. Views B and C featured flared skirts with a stitched hem. Separate pattern pieces are included for cup sizes A, B, C, and D. I chose this skirt in particular because I wanted one that was only slightly flared. I knew my fabric would not hold pleats or gathers very well because it's so mid-weight and kind of thick, so I eliminated patterns with those details right away. A partial circle skirt like this one is so flattering on so many body types because it floats gently away from the body without being too poofy, big, or flared. It's slim without hugging the body. After cutting out the pattern pieces that I showed you, I sewed the bodice per instructions and then the skirt per its instructions. Then, to attach them together, I gathered up the bottom edge of the bodice until it fit the circumference of the skirt's upper cut edge. This means the bodice is gathered, but the skirt is not. I inserted some quarter inch wide elastic into the waist seam allowance for ease of movement. Then, I threw in an invisible zip up the center back and voila, a mashed up dress. My boyfriend said that this looked like a high-end designer, like Prada which I thought was really sweet. I love my dress, especially because in a way, it's my very own design. My partner in crime for the social mashup sewing challenge was Lori from Girls in the Garden. Please head over to her blog to see the adorable jumpsuit she made. She is such a master at pattern mixing and I adore her make. 
You can also check out the hashtag social mashup on Instagram to see all of the awesome mashups that everyone has made this month. Everything from wedding dresses to leotards were submitted, and I just don't know how we're going to pick a winner. If you haven't entered yet and are a super fast sewist, there's still time. The contest closes on August 31st at midnight, and all the rules to enter are on my Instagram. Even if you don't make the cutoff for the contest, I encourage you to try a pattern mashup sometime. It's a lot of fun and really taps into a creative side that we don't normally get to use. Imagine a look and make it happen regardless if there is a pattern that looks exactly like what's in your head or not. Let me know if you have any questions about pulling it off. And until next time, I will see you all very soon. Bye!